You wanna know how to stop wasting hours trying to choose the right font? This video is gonna help you do that. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another segment of Designer Mind where I try to help you become a better designer. And in this episode, I got a question about how I choose fonts for my projects and I do wanna share some of my learnings or the process that I've developed because obviously when I was just starting out as a designer, I used to trust my gut feeling. Just look at a lot of fonts, waste hours trying to look at you know, fonts and try to make sure that is this the good fit for this project or not, or just look up at what other people are doing, or is it a trendy font and use that. And obviously that wasn't very successful in terms of I couldn't make the right decision for each project. And as I said, I wasted so much time. And so here's the framework of how I think about this today. First of all, let's try to understand what is what are we trying to do when we're choosing fonts. So basically typography fonts um, has two purposes. The first one is utilitarian. It has a purpose, type has a function. You have to read it. And in order for it to work well, you have to choose a font which is readable. It's easy to read so that it can do its job. Um, that being said, some designers like David Carson, for example, prove that you can choose fonts which are unreadable if that's the function that you wanna serve. If you wanna create something that is cool, grungy, sometimes you might on purpose choose something which is unreadable, but that has to be a very specific solution to a problem or to something that you wanna communicate. The second thing is obviously the vibe or the feel that you wanna communicate using the typography because every font has a different story, a different feeling that it evokes. And so once you've got the functional thing uh, figured out, you chose a font which is, you know, it's readable. Now actually the choice is around what do I wanna communicate using the font? So what's the process of going through that? Basically, you have to ask yourself two questions. Um, the first question, and it doesn't matter which question you ask first. And the first question is, does this font has to be classic? You mean old time favorite, it has been proven before, or does it has to be new? Let me explain why I think this is an important question. So we used to seeing type all the time in, in different in logos, in books, on website, everywhere we're reading, we're looking at text. And a part of the thing that you wanna communicate with, it's, it's a new brand, it's a new offering, it's a new website, whatever, you want the first thing uh, that people come up, the, the feeling that they have is this, is this something recognizable, that it looks like something else, and that might be good because you're trying to look like something that is established, that is not like new and funky. Um, and Or you're trying to look new and funky. So it depends on the business. For example, if you are working with a B2B business or like a big bank or something, they might want to look established, look like they're operating for a lot of time. When you're looking with um, maybe, I don't know, a startup or something, maybe it's very important that they look new, current, up to date. So understanding those, this first question leads you to where you're gonna look for when you're looking for font. So if your font has to be classic and recognizable, it's pretty easy. I mean, you can Google, and I'll link in the description before an article which I, I look up a lot, which is 25 of the most classic fonts ever used in, in graphic design. And that has a lot of the fonts that you probably know, like, you know, uh, Din, Helvetica, I don't know, Mr. Eves, uh, Garamond, all these kind of classic font that has been time tested. You know they're readable because they've been used by almost everyone. And you, you, you can choose one from there. Now, classic, most famous designer, Massimo Vignelli, uh, like Italian famous designer who did a lot of the brands, do you know, actually had a manifest where he only had, I think, like six fonts and all the design that he ever did for all of his uh, clients and he worked with huge client, he only worked with one of these six fonts or a combination between them. So you can really be a minimalist and only work with this classic font and still create amazing work, still can create contemporary work. And so this is one 
option where you go. So I don't go for <laughs> Massimo is like only six fonts, but I look at a list of 25 fonts that I can reuse over and over again and I'm using them constantly. The fact that they're classic doesn't mean that they're out of fashion or that you can't use them anymore. Now, if on the other hand, you're, you specifically want the, the logo, the website, whatever it is that you're designing to look new and different, like you like it takes you a second to recognize where you are, what is this thing, it looks new, then you're gonna look for fonts which haven't been used by so many people that it's super recognizable. And my favorite place for that is you work for them, you work for them at a place that curates a lot of fonts. I go there mainly for font, but they also have graphic assets and other great things. Now, the beautiful thing about you work for them is that they kind of give you examples of each font, kind of like how they would use it. And it gives you kind of a sense of what vibe can be created using these fonts. And so I really, this is the resource that I use when I look for fonts which are new. Um, they have great fonts and both these, either you're gonna use this uh, uh, 25 fonts list that I'll link below, or you go to you work for them and look at bestsellers or new fonts, you're gonna know that these two uh, lists are curated enough so that they'll probably pass the functional test, the readability test, so you're not choosing font which are badly made. Now, I have to say that usually fonts, if you're looking for free fonts and when I was in my early days as a designer, a lot of times I would resort to free fonts, kind of like from Da Font or something like that, because you know I didn't have much money or budget for a project and I would look for free fonts. The, sometimes you as a junior designer can't really tell the difference. Hey, this looks exactly like Helvetica or something else. Um, and you don't understand the difference between a, a paid, high quality premium font and something that is offered for free. But trust me when I tell you that the really good fonts, which are time tested and, and, and were created by good high quality foundries, do have a very, very big difference in terms of legibility, in terms of how the font is made. So the file of the font actually includes things like the spacing and, and you know a lot of other factors. In, terms of how the font will use when you create a paragraph or where you create a headline out of that. So when you choose a free font, that actually sometimes kind of you fail at the first usability functionality type of thing. And so just working with these two uh, resources that, that I've mentioned, I think will help you kind of remove all the kind of risk of working with like literally bad fonts. The second question that you have to ask, or sometimes I actually ask it before, is should I work with serif fonts or should I work with sans serif fonts? And I assume that if you're watching this that you do understand the two main categories of fonts, which is serif fonts. They have these little, you know, serif that are, uh, you know, left over from the times when we were like, uh, writing either chopping <laughs> letters in in uh, in stone or we were writing them using you know um, calligraphic pens and serif fonts which are modern and don't have those things. So this is kind of like categoric level which you have to determine. A lot of times you can make a combination of serif and non-serif fonts, but sometimes serif fonts usually go for like established or more classic or fancy connotations, that's what they communicate because they have history behind them. And serif, sans serif fonts are modern and, you know, are they, they look much modern because they were only started to use them, you know, in the last 100 or 200 years. So that's the main categories. And that's one of the first decisions that you have to make is this project, should I look for a font which is serif or sans serif? Then I go down into the other question, should I look at in the classic list or should I look it under you know the new, uh, you work for them where I can find new font that haven't been used by many people. Then I would go into, you, know, you work for them and look for a serif or sans serif depending on how I answer the second question. All right, that's how I work. We'd love to hear about your process for choosing fonts. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.